Sometimes you might want to get a complete 3D model, but you might just can't because, for example, like this stone, don't worry, it's fake. And I put it on some surface like a turntable or a desk. And you just can't scan the, the bottom area because it's hidden by itself, right? Like we scan the, the top and also the side area, but no way to get the bottom. So there are two approaches for you. You can do also capture the bottom area. Number one is you can do it in the same scan, scan the top area and the side area first and pause the scan and flip it over and continue the scan to capture the bottom area. And don't worry, the tracking, the, the scanner will get its way back tracking. Okay, so second way to do it is you create two separate scans. First is the top area and the side area, and then complete, save it as scan one. And you flip it over, scan the bottom area and the side area again, and save it as scan number two, and then merge them together into one complete 3D model. Okay, now let's scan it in the first approach. That is, we scan the top area first and also the side areas too, and then flip it over and continue a scan. Okay, let's first check the settings. Standard feature, okay. Okay, let's go. Okay, first turn done and looking good, no problem. And as you can see, I scanned a lot of these side areas, right? Why is that? That's because after we flip it over, we want to capture the bottom area. Well, now it's the top. And we cannot scan from here. That's because we haven't, this area hasn't been scanned yet, not at all. And so we should start from the side area that we have already scanned. That's how the scanner can find its way back because all these features has been scanned and logged into the scanner's memory. Okay. Okay, go. And as you can see, the scanner tells you losing track for a little while, right? And do not panic. That's because the scanner is finding its way back. It needs a little time, like half a second. So well, when you see that, it's simple. Just keep your hands steady and wait for the scanner to find its way back on tracking. Okay, that's about it. Okay, let's look at the point cloud. No problem, looking good. There are some noises around here is because of the turntable, but let's, don't worry because we can clean it after uh, in the post-processing procedures. Okay. So let's just be lazy and use one-click editing. Let's click apply. All right, finished. And let's use the isolation tool to delete the Hmm. Or we can just use the, the lasso tool to delete the rest. Detect again. Okay, finish. That's a pretty stone, right? Very complete. And we just pause it and scan it again so that how we can get a complete 3D model. Now let's try the second way. Again, let's scan the top area first and then stop. Save that, flip it over to start a new scan, to scan the bottom area. But note that we also need to scan a lot of side area because we also need this overlapping areas, those features to help us to doing the merging. It's the same idea when keep letting the scanner find its way back. Okay, check the settings, all right. Okay, that's it. And we don't have to do the post-processing. We can simply com click complete and save it as scan one and start a new scan. And flip this over. Oh, 
Okay. Now let's click complete and save this as scan number two. And now let's merge them together. Okay, now I have two scan pro uh, one scan project with two scans, two 3D models. And here is a common mistake. You might experience this. If you click merge now before you're doing anything like fusion or meshing. And as you can see, you can select those two 3D models. Why is that? That's because you only can do it after you complete at least fusion. Then you can start merging. So keep that in mind. Okay, so let's just let's just do the fusion. We don't have to do the meshing. Okay, let's start with number one and we fuse it. And remember, when you are trying to merge two scans into one complete scan, it's better to keep the point distance in fusion the same so that you won't it won't create problems. So let's just use 0.70 as the point distance. Okay, let's fuse the first one. Okay, and it's better to clean it up, especially those noises, because you don't want those noises get merged together, right? So we use the isolation tool to detect and delete those isolations. Okay, looking good. The first one here and the second one, we do the same thing. And well, keep that in mind, the point distance should be the same. 70, okay, apply the fusion. Okay, and same thing, let's clean up the 3D model here. Let's delete those isolations. Okay, now you click, if we click merge, as you can see, now you can select those two models. And there are two ways you can choose to merge them. One is feature. So for those feature rich objects, you can choose feature alignment to let the software detect, auto detect those features on the surface and align them together to generate you a new model, which is complete. Or you can choose marker. And marker is more, more or less a manual way to let you merge two scans. And you, you need to click a lot of dots, those spots and make them align with each other. Then you can also merge two objects. But in this case, let's use feature and we can preview the alignment. Let's just click that. Okay, looking good, right? Very good. No problem. So now we can choose this generate model. Okay, now as you can see the under the, the same project, now there is a third a third 3D model called always called merge 01. And now you can continue doing the meshing because we haven't done the, the meshing for the number one and number two skin, right? Okay, uh, let's just choose 5.1, whatever. Okay, meshing completed. Looks good, right? Okay, I've just showed you with a feature rich object with this fake stone. But what about like a featureless object, just like this wheel hub? you will need marker mode to scan it, right? But it also has a hidden bottom surface. Actually, it's not a surface, look. On the two side, they have totally different structure. In the bottom, there is an inward structure like this. So how we can scan that? Actually, it's the same idea with the marker mode because one each marker dot can be considered as a unique feature. When it's getting scanned and get logged into the scanner, it will have its own coordinates in the scanner. So it will be very easy to keep on tracking. So same idea, scan the top area and the side first and pause and we flip it over and continue the scan with the help of the side area and we switch to the bottom, the inward structure. But do keep this in mind. When you're scanning something with marker mode and you're switching surfaces, just like this, when you're switching from the side to the top, it is easy to get lost. I mean, tracking lost. So how to prevent that is, as you can see, I have put a lot of marker dots on the edge. And when you're switching from the side to the top, move very slowly so that the scanner will keep tracking because it can also capture some marker dots on the very edge of the side during the switch. 
Okay, now let's try to scan this wheel. Uh, as you can see, I put something, this piece of plastic paper under the wheel hub. Why I'm doing that? This is because, look, the hub is, has a very smooth edge. And when, I, when it's put it on the turntable or any desk, so it will be closely attached to a surface. And when you're scanning, it's inevitable that you capture some of the surface as a noise. You know, and it's connected to the 3D model, which makes it very hard to get rid of. You can't just use the isolation tool because it's connected, it's not addressed as isolation. So you need to manually cut it off, which is not that easy, right? So it's pretty easy to prevent that. Just put this reflective dark plastic paper under it. Okay, now let's scan it. Let's check the setting, okay? Let's try to scan the top area first. Okay, let's find a good distance. Okay, go. Okay, first turn done. Now I'm moving up and pay attention to my movement. I am moving and tilting at the same time. And also maintain a good distance. Actually, it's better to stand up. Okay, yeah, that's more stable. Okay, let's scan it one more turn because I see a, a hole right there. But small holes are okay. We can always, you know, fix that in the post-processing with a fill hole function. Okay, that's about it. Okay, let's check it out. Okay, looking good. Several holes here, but that should be, shouldn't be the case. Okay, now let's flip it over and scan it again. And as you can see, I didn't scan the, the side very okay. Still some empty surface right here. But the marker mode has a very good feature Look, if I continue scanning, it finds its way back right away, like immediately. Why is that? It's because marker dots are more, I mean, much more precise than natural feature. So it, uh, the scanner can capture, can find its way back way more quickly than using feature mode. Okay, one turn almost finished. Okay. And again, let's tilt, move, and capture the... Okay, better stand up, right? I did shake it a bit, and what I got is tracking lost, but good enough, the software can, I mean, the scanner can also still find its way back. move closer one more turn because I also still see some holes in it okay that's about right several little holes but mm, doesn't really matter okay let's start the post processing okay let's just be lazy let's use one click editing Okay, awesome, looking good. Several little holes, let's, let's first use isolation tool. Let's see if we can find some isolation and delete them. Hmm, not so much, huh? And fill holes function. And now the, with the updated software 5.4, now the hole which is already in the structure will not be detected as holes, look those holes right here will the, uh, the software will just detect as normal and so the little holes now look there's a lot right and now the good thing is you can use the selection tool to select multiple holes look i'm selecting all of those and fill them all the time once together so you don't have to click 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 every holes that's kind of a waste of time right 
Okay, holes fixed. Uh, is that a hole right here? Oh, yes, actually, oh, that's correct. There's a hole right here. Okay, and there's, uh, mm, there's, it's not a hole right here, okay. Yeah, looking good. So that's how you can scan this wheel hub in marker mode. And just keep that in mind. With marker mode, you need to tilt your scanner and move to another surface very slowly. But finding the, the tracking, find its way back is much easier than natural feature mode.